Hello and welcome to our weekly boxing chat on Sky Sports News. I'm Andy Scott. I'm joined by manager and trainer Tundi Ajayi alongside WBA Continental and now European super lightweight champion Adam Azim. Welcome to both of you. Uh, now, Adam, I'm going to lead with you. Congratulations, lifting that European title up in Wolverhampton. Just your 10th fight, uh, only 21. Uh, you said you want to win it, defend it pretty quickly. So I'm going to give you the floor. It is your chance. We can break the news on Sky Sports News. Yeah. Your next defence is already locked in. So tell us where and when. I'm um, fighting in you know, Wembley Arena on the you know, Joshua Boatsy's and Dan Aziz card, a massive card. And... Uh, yeah, I'll be fighting Enoch Paulson has already faced off in the in the ring, so I'm pretty sure everyone knew about it already. So, yeah, it just gave us a chance to announce it formally. So it will be February third at Wembley Arena. Yeah. Uh, Enoch Paulson, yeah, you've already gone face to face with him. Yeah. You had to get through Frank Petitjean, a very very good performance, stopping uh, the French veteran. How do you reflect on on that performance and how you boxed? I thought you know it was a great performance. You know, I didn't rush my work. Uh, I picked the right shots. Uh, you know, I had fun in there and, you know, enjoyed myself and got the stoppage. So, you know, I, a lot of people were, you know, very happy that I won the European title and brought it back to Slough, like I said. So, He was tough to the head, but the, we've seen your body work here, which um, also softened him up as well. Was that something that you had pre-planned and, and worked on with Shane McGuigan that, you know, Pet Jean, season champion, he could be uh, tough to the head, but you might be able to unlock him to the body? Yeah, uh, you know, our, our main tactic was, you know, obviously to break him down slowly, but obviously break him down, you know, to the body because, you know, he, he was quite tough, you know, from the top. So, you know, you know, to get the, you know, the guard down is to break him down to the body, you know, hopefully, and then obviously get the, you know, the stoppage from the top, so, which I did. So just tell me about the little break that you've had. We came to your celebration yeah. party and uh, your dad said, make sure you get a shot of it because it's the only yeah. time we're going to ever see him uh, eating cake. And uh, you actually ran home from the party uh, at 2am, did your road work in Slough. Yeah. It's been no real time off straight back into it. Obviously, February 3rd is, is not that far away. Yeah, it's not that far away. You know, for me, I only really need an eight weeks camp or something or even seven weeks. So, you know, I'm always ticking over. You know, I'm not going crazy with the food sometimes. I'm always, you know, you know, ticking over in the gym and doing crazy runs. So, um, you know, I'm, it's, with, the main thing is to be out there as soon as possible because, you know, as a boxer, you know, as me, as a fighter, I've got to learn and develop and, you know, I, I can't wait to get back in the ring straight away now. Let's bring in the man on your shoulder. Now, <laughs> not everybody will know. I think a lot of people will know, but yeah. you two know each other from way back, yeah. from way back. How old was he when you first met him? We came down to the gym with the ringside cameras and you yes. did some work together. Tundi Ajay and Adam Azim, it goes way back. Yeah, I think that was. I think Adam was about seven or eight years old, and Hassan also, probably was about nine years old. Uh, so I've I've known this young man for many years, and uh, I'm 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 proud to be part of uh, his journey. This is it. This is what we were talking wow. about. So wow. Look Neither of you have aged. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. One's earning more money than me, though. <laughs> At this age, I mean, it's, it's, you've probably been asked this before, but even back then, yes. what was he like? And could you have predicted that he would go on to achieve what uh, he has so far? Well, um, when, I, when I designed my system, um, and I have to give a shout out to Matt Groves, uh, computer whiz kid, genius, actually, um, you know, he explained to me that, you know, uh, the elements that build up a computer, speed, power, uh, are really from the CPU, the hard drive, um, and, uh, and the computer's ability to store information. So what was most notable about Adam at that young age was his ability to take in information. Where I, there were many kids around at the time that I trained with Adam, because Adam used to come with Hassan and his dad, who I'm giving a lot of credit to. Um, Adam was just the one who, and uh, you know, we said it back then, I'm earmarking Adam Azim to be a superstar just because of his ability to take in information and actually deliver it. And uh, so we, here we are today, uh, under 10, fight, well, 10 fights and European champion. I'm proud of, very proud of him. Yeah, you, uh, I should just shout out Pinewood Star and, and Les Stevens, who did yeah. all the, that work with you. And, and Shane McGuigan now, your pro trainer. Yeah. Everyone's had an input uh, as to the fight that we've seen um, at this point. May I ask you about Chris Billum-Smith? Now, yeah. uh, the, the fight on Sky Sports 
Sunday. I want to make sure I'm emphasising yeah. that. Sunday yeah. is what you need to earmark for your diary. Chris makes the first defence of his WBA Cruiserweight title against Mateus Masternak. Now, he's returned to the gym as a world champion. Have you noticed any difference in him, the way he carries himself or the way he's preparing? Uh, people talk about sort of climbing Mount Everest when you yeah. win a world title. Yeah. Uh, and maybe it's difficult to climb it for a second time. But has he still got that challenger mentality, you think? Yeah, he has. You know, he's always working hard in the gym, you know. For you know, Chris William Smith, the one thing about him, his courage, his focus, and he's always dedicated to the sport. Um, you know, I'm always obviously taking tips off him because, you know, he's a world champion. And, um, you know, he's obviously got a tough fight on Sunday. But, you know, uh, watching uh, Masonic back on the videos, I, I, I'm pretty sure I think Chris William stops him in later rounds. And he, I, I think, he, um, you know, Chris would, you know, put in the combinations and you know, stop him early, so... Yeah. Okay, that's interesting because on the podcast, which is available to download this afternoon, Tundi, Barry Jones was very much in agreement with Adam that as champion, Chris Bill and Smith, with that hometown advantage and that passionate home crowd, he could be uh, only the second man to stop Masternak. Now, he's been in with massive punches. He's been in with technicians, Barely. but only one man has stopped him, and that was Grigory Drodds, who was a yes. uh, humongous puncher. Uh, can he do it? What have you made of, of Chris Bill and Smith? Yeah, I mean, uh, the whole... The backdrop and storyline to Chris Billam Smith is, is is amazing, a remarkable story, um, especially with his mother, who uh, I'm, I'm hearing now is uh, on a way to recover. Really, yeah, his, his mum obviously uh, he, he made it uh, public in the post fight press, yes, uh, um, press interview that uh, she'd been suffering from cancer. Yeah, she she is recovering. I'm delighted to say. Yes, thank God for that. And you know, uh, it's his time. It's Chris Billam Smith. Uh, Masson Mech is a very, very tough opponent. I mean, we probably all remember him from the Tony Bellew fight. Um, but he's only lost against very, very good fighters. And so, although having that experience, I do feel Chris Billam Smith is in a bit of a cloud at the moment. Humble man, and he works very hard. And I feel uh, his commitment and dedication to the sport uh, will ultimately lead him to a victory um, on Sunday. Yeah, Sunday, we've got to keep <laughs> coming into it. Ben Whitaker on the undercard. Uh, now, I think there's been a, a huge amount of frustration, primarily from Ben Whitaker. Every two steps forward, he takes one back with momentum and injuries. Uh, but what are you hoping to see from Ben Whitaker uh, on Sunday, Adam? I know you're a fan. You like the, yeah. the flashy uh, showboating because he delivers at the end yeah. of it. I mean, he's Marmite, though, isn't he? You he's, love him or yeah. you hate him, but you want to watch him. Yeah. He's also my partner in crime because, like the other day, I said, I'm Batman, he's Robin. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah I've got, I have to go watch Robin as well. Uh, yeah, he's, um, you know, he's going to do his do. He, he's going to put on, a, obviously, a great performance and he, he likes to put on a show and he loves that swagger as well. So, you know, a lot of people are entertained by it. And, uh, you know, I feel like, you know, Ben's always had that swagger in the amateurs and always had that, you know, entertaining, you know, look about himself. So um, he's going to look phenomenal on the weekend. And, yeah, I'm looking forward to, you know, him doing the business. So. Tundi, are you a fan? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think you used the word I used in a, on the podcast, uh, Marmite. Um, but the more you watch Ben, uh, the more likeable he becomes to us, let's say, old school boxing fans who really don't want to see the showbiz and the razzmatazz. We just want to see the work done. But he, he's a class act. And it, it's not a put on either. He, he was like that in the amateurs. Uh, and he was beating top, top amateurs. So I think really we'll, Ben will get more recognition when he does take that, you know, inevitable step up in class and, and, and fight good guys. But he's a, a definitely, he's more than a prospect. He is a class fighter. You don't win a silver medal in the Olympics if you can't fight. I've, I've heard some say that winning a, a medal in the Olympics is harder than winning a world title um, in real life. So um, we all look forward to the progression uh, of Ben Whitaker. Yeah, look forward to having him back. Now, I know we're jumping around a little bit. We've already announced, you can see it on the ticker there, that Adam Azim will be uh, defending his European title against Enoch Paulson on February 3rd. Well, I'm delighted to say that Enoch Paulson joins us live now. Uh, Enoch, thank you for waiting around for us. Great to see you. Um, we saw you go face to face with Adam Azim in the ring after uh, his victory. Now we, the dust has settled. Uh, how do you look back on, on that performance? And have you seen anything uh, firsthand that you think you can capitalise on from Adam? Yeah, first of all, thank you for inviting me again. It's perfect. Yeah, the fight was good for him, you know. He is a very skillful boxer, you know, young, talented guy. Um, and of course, I saw some something I could use uh, to my next fight, but of course, I can't tell it right now, you know. 
No, I, I didn't think you were going to tell us. Well, it is worth making the point, though, that um, we've got you graphics as former European champion, but you never lost the title in the ring. So is there a feeling from you that, uh, that Adam is just borrowing that title at the moment? Yeah, right now he have the title, you know, so of course, credit to him and his team, because they're a great team, you know. But there were some circumstances for the fight with Frank, my fight, you know, where I was, I was injured. So, so I think the, the fight is like a mismatch, you know, uh, if you like to try to compare the two fights. Um, and of course, Frank is older now and, and uh, Adam is young and, and fast, you know, so you can't really compare the fights uh, against. But of course, I saw that, that he has power, he has the speed, so it's perfect for me. I'm looking forward to this fight because it's going to be a big fight for me, you know. Enoch, Adam Azim is sitting alongside me. Uh, what would your message be to him? I know you exchanged some pleasantries in the ring after the fight, but what would you say to him now as he starts his preparation? I'll just say, just be ready for the fight. It's going to be a great match for us, of course, you know. Uh, train hard, you know, fight, fight good, and then we'll, we'll see, you, see you in the, the 3rd of February, you know. <laughs> And Adam, what's your response to that? I mean, I don't yeah. think there's any bad blood here. It's but not bad blood. At but the same time, yeah. Enoch was making the point that don't yeah. compare the two performances. His yeah. against Petitjon and yours against Petitjon. Yeah. Presumably, you don't agree. You are going to be comparing them. Yeah, we are. Going to, it's, you know, obviously, the, we're going to comparison them. You know, uh, obviously, in it. Um, but it is what it is. You know, I've got the stoppage, but you know, I'm looking forward to February the third, and good luck to him. So, yeah, I'm going to have a big camp, and you know, hopefully, that sla that belt is staying in Slough. So, yeah. Enoch, before I let you go, you, you sampled the, uh, the hometown atmosphere and presumably you, you liked what you, you heard. You got a good reception from the locals, but um, you may probably... I'm, look, I'm, I'm, I know the answer. You're probably going to get a hostile reaction and you're probably going to get a few boos when you walk to the ring. Are you comfortable with that? Yeah, of course. You know, that's a part of the game, you know. I like, I like those, those kind of big fights where you, you have to make the upset, you know. For me, it's perfect, you know. I, I just get more motivated for it, so it's perfect. Looking forward for it. Enoch, thank you very much for coming on and joining us live on Sky Sports News. We wish you all the best with your preparation as well. Take it. Well, that is all that we've got time for this week. Thank you very much, Tundi Ajayi and Adam Azim, for coming on. All roads lead to February 3rd, as we've broken on Sky Sports News. Now, remember to join us live on Sky Sports Arena, 6 o'clock on Sunday, fight night from Bournemouth. The aforementioned Ben Whitaker will be in action, along with Olympic gold medalist Lauren Price, Fran Hennessy and more. And in the main event, the hometown hero Chris Billum-Smith returns to face his toughest test to date. been a long, long road, all the hard days, in the run of the litter of the gym and no expectation on me. 27th of May, 2023, I'll, uh, I'll never, never forget that date. But if you close your It's such a, an achievement for me, and I'm very, very proud of. It makes me emotional now, just, just thinking about it. For me, he's my toughest test to date. I know what it's like to be a challenger in his position, fighting for his first world title. I don't want to just win the title and, and that's it. I want to cement a sort of legacy in boxing now. I want to make a statement in this fight and do a better job than anyone's ever done on him.